Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Children's Time. But today, I want to talk about another prophet. Habakkuk was a prophet of God. Like Ezekiel, he was God's messenger, bringing words from God to his people. His job was not an easy one. He saw how badly the people in Judah were treating one another, like stealing, lying, and fighting. Their king was also selfish and proudful. Imagine yourself seeing something really bad happening to people, something that your heart tells you that it's not right. Hmm. Oh no! What's going on? Why are you doing this? Now that was just a funny example of how Habakkuk must have felt at the time. He saw so many wrong things that was happening within the city of Judah. So he complained to God. He said, how long, God, must I call for help? And yet you won't listen. There is violence and people are getting hurt. Why won't you save? And God answered by telling Habakkuk that when people don't love him, they don't know how to love one another because they only want to love themselves. They only want to do the things that make them happy. God hates sin. But have you ever asked why? It's because he loves you and he does not want us to be hurt. So God's answer to this bullying and fighting and stealing was that he is going to bring an even more powerful nation, Babylon, to bring about punishment to Judah. Now when Habakkuk heard this, what? Is God making things even worse? How can God bring another big bully to hurt his people? Come on, Habakkuk said. He complained again. God, no way are you going to use this big bully of a nation, Babylon, to defeat the Israelites. You hate evil and this nation is sinful themselves and you're going to use them? Habakkuk had a hard time understanding why bad guys always win and why bad things happen to people who are good. Actually, we have a tough time understanding this too. And I wonder if you've ever asked God, why? God answered Habakkuk, telling him that he was in control of it all. Not just Babylon, not just Judah, but the entire world. Though he will punish his people for their sin, the punishment will not last forever. God has his great plan, but it doesn't mean that things will always go as we expected. Things will probably be tough. Bullies still win sometimes. And good people might still have to go through some pretty rough things. But Habakkuk's prayer tells us who wins at the end. God, no matter what the world looks like, God is still in control. God, the powerful one, the one who shakes the earth, who commands the sea, who holds the sun and the moon and the stars in his hand, he is the one in control. So boys and girls, even though things seem so wrong, so unfair, and so out of the place that God has made it at times, we can rejoice in the Lord. We can have joy because God is bigger. He has already made a way for us to be set free from sin and hurt. That way is through Jesus. Jesus, our Savior, came to earth and on the cross to bear all the sins of this world and defeated the power of Satan. So what is joy? Our joy is in Jesus. So as we continue to wait in this season of Advent, I hope that you'll remember that God is in control. Now, I hope you have your Advent devotion already and let's turn to page 35 and let's see what we're gonna do today. So for this week, write in, I will rejoice in the Lord. Then draw a picture of yourself. rejoicing in the Lord for what he has done for you. Thanks for joining me in this week and I'll see you.